Hi, my name is Bob Golding. Uh, I'm an escalation engineer for Microsoft at the uh, Charlotte, North Carolina facility. <coughs> and today, uh, making a recording um, with about basic functionality of Storeport. What does Storeport do um, in, the, in the operating system? What are its functions? So let's begin. Storeport is a uh, it's a library that simplifies the development of a storage driver. It has a support for development of a physical mini store that interfaces with hardware <clears throat> and when you and is restricted to APIs is exposed to Storeport and Miniport.h. So there are restrictions in developing a mini port that that drives hardware. It also supports virtual mini ports, which are mini ports that live in a VM that don't actually control hardware. And they do not fall, and uh, and it's not you don't have the uh, API restrictions as you do on physical mini ports. Yes. Let's start with some definitions and terms. A mini port. A mini port is a driver that controls adapter hardware, or it could be a mini port that uh, controls uh, virtual devices as well. A LUN is a logical unit which is uh, basic which is a disk okay um, and an SRB is a SCSI or storage request block we'll get into more of that a little later hardware initialization data has information about hard, a hardware uh, mini port or a virtual mini port that the driver passes back to Storeport from Storeport Initialize. Storeport Initialize is the first function that's called when a mini port is loaded. The port configuration information is passed back to Storeport from mini ports from its hardware find adapter function. Some offsets are already set by Storeport. First, uh, let's talk about two of them, basic initialization. A mini port driver entry is called when an adapter is discovered by plug and play. The hardware initialization data, which is passed in from the mini port from, uh, from, from the driver entry uh, calling store port initialize, as I mentioned previously. This informs store port of the hardware information um, and uh, some callbacks that, uh, that store port needs to, uh, to, to, uh, for the adapter to function. The mini port's hardware initialize function is called to init its private extension and do some initialization functions. And then the hardware find adapter is called from the plug and play start and returns the port configuration information to store port. And some information is already uh, pre filled by the store port driver itself. This is an example of, uh, our, of uh, the hardware initialization data. We have the size, and we have some functions that are passed back from the mini port to store port, such as the hardware initialize function, the start I/O function, which which is called uh, by store port to initiate I/O, the interrupt function, which is uh, which is called when uh, an interrupt occurs, because the interrupt um, is actually uh, the first level. The interrupt is actually, actually handled by Storeport, and Storeport will call the interrupt handler for the mini port in the hardware find adapter function. And, and then below, you see I pointed out what's called the hardware build I.O. instruction. The build I.O. is called before start I.O., which allows the adapter to pre allocate some um, information from uh, structures uh, before initiating the I.O. If the uh, build I.O. fails, the um, the uh, the storeport must call. Uh, I'm sorry. The mini port must call the um, notification function to, uh, to 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 fail the request so it could be retried. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. And here's the port configuration information, and you can see it has information about what the adapter supports. Uh, it has the um, SRB extension size, which tells the uh, which tells Storeport how much uh, SRB extension data has to be allocated. Uh, if it could support DMA 64-bit uh, DMA DMA addressing, um, 
cache of data, bus maps, support scatter gather, DMHB, bus width, uh, number of page banks, maximum transfer length. This is all information about uh, that um, about what the adapter supports, such as um, such as tag queuing. More information, of course, can find could be uh, found out about all these uh, structures on MSDN. There are two kinds of request blocks that are that are uh, that the uh, store port supports. Storage request blocks are new, and SCSI request blocks are for older mini ports. The use of storage request blocks are recommended for high performance. Storage request blocks have a larger tag field, for example. Uh, so, in the tag field, uh, is how many requests uh, is a number, or is how many requests could be outstanding. The uh, if the tag field. Um, it was 8 bits on the older uh, SCSI request blocks. So after 255 requests, the uh, uh, store port would start uh, holding back requests. But now the, the field is larger and more requests could be sent to the mini port. And there were two offsets for errors, the SRB status and the SCSI status. The SCSI status reflects what's passed back from the storage, and the SRB status can be used by the adapter um, f to uh, return uh, statuses such as such as busy. Uh, we we'll talk more about that uh, later on in the presentation. More info can be found, of course, on MSDN. Talk about some of the mini Ford functions that are passed back in the hardware initialization data. There's a hardware reset bus uh, function. <coughs> Uh, store port will time requests, and when request times out, the hardware re uh, request times out, store port will initiate a LUN reset. Uh, if the LUN reset times out, the hardware reset bus function is called. And this could be, this is a mini port function uh, back in the old days of parallel SCSI uh, that would the uh, hardware reset bus function would pull up, pull the reset line and reset the device. And now with fiber channel that doesn't exist anymore, so the hardware reset bus function uh, is up to the mini port and how they want to implement that. Uh, so that's up to the, the mini port, uh, mini port uh, developer. Hardware interrupt. It's a mini port specific interrupt service function when an interrupt occurs. Hardware start I.O. is called by store port to send I.O. to the mini port. And what gets passed to the mini port is the, the, the mini port's hardware extension along with the SCSI or uh, uh, SRB, uh, SCU, store, the uh, storage request block or the SCSI request block depending on uh, what the mini port supports. All accord, like I mentioned, all accord with the device hardware extension, which is a private data for the mini port. And the private data is initialized in a hardware initialized function. The, the door port has some basic responsibilities and what it does, it handles flow control for tagged and untagged requests. Uh, meaning um, if, a, if there are 20 uh, uh, tagged and untagged, tag request means that the uh, if it supports tag queuing that means uh, the adapter slash uh, LUN could support many requests sent to it at the same time. Now if a uh, if there are 20 requests outstanding an untagged request arrives which is uh, the uh, store port has to wait for all the tag requests to drain and not issue any new tag request until uh, before it can issue the untag. Store port is responsible for all that. And it handles some error conditions such as busy. Some some uh, mini ports may flow control requests if, uh, if you said do a call start IO and, and a mini port can't handle a request for some reason it'll return SRB status 5 which is SRB status busy. The SRB status busy uh, uh, store port will pause the queue for 250 milliseconds, meaning it won't accept any new requests for that amount of time, and then uh, the queue will be restarted and uh, uh, requests will resume. Uh, these errors uh, use a retry count of 20 uh, for default. After 20, the request will fail. And also uh, for status, 
for status busy you will fail. So many forts use uh, use busy to flow control, as I mentioned before. Store port also handles queue full, which by default will wait for 25% of outstanding requests to drain before the um, before any new requests are sent to the mini port. And these are registry tunable. Tunable. And store port is responsible for enumerating LUNs and creating devices or PDOs that. Um, that represent these LUNs in the operating system. And also handle system level functions such as uh, PMP, power management with mini port callbacks as needed. And again, more specific information um, can be found on MSDN. Let's talk about some basic request handling. Functions are called to the SRB and private mini port, uh, mini port's private extension. The hardware build IO function is called first to do some request pre-processing if it's defined it's optional it returns true if the start IO can be called if it returns false the start IO will not be called hardware start IO the SRB is sent to the mini port to send request to the device or, or the LUN now if a hardware build IO fails uh, the uh, the, the uh, SCSI port notifi notification must be called with request complete and if that brings us to request completion. Miniport calls store port notification with the SRB after completing after completing request. The store port no notification must be called, as I mentioned before, if the hardware build I.O. returned false. Store port notification with re request complete option must be called to complete a request. Otherwise, the uh, store port could time it out. Now, as far as timeouts are concerned, some mini ports will time out the request themselves because store port issues a LUN reset if it detects a timeout. Some mini ports will shave uh, a couple of seconds off the timeout, and then if the request fails, it'll it'll um, take the corrective action of aborting, re attempting to abort the request, and then return a failure back to store port. Either request aborted or timeout. It's up to the mini port implementer, uh, developer, on uh, what it will return uh, when it detects a timeout. Talk a bit about error handling. Like I mentioned before, request timeout is managed by store port. Requests are put on a pended queue, and it could be one per processor. When request to a store port that detects a request timeout, it'll issue a LUN reset. Timeouts can be set in the registry. There are two places in the registry that timeouts can be set, and that can be found in MSDN, or if QoS or quality of service is enabled. If the LUN reset times out, the Minisport bus reset handler is called, and and the timeout uh, the timeout is set in the SRB, and that's how the timeout is passed to the mini port. And as I mentioned previously, some mini ports timeout request and fill it before the timeout period to avoid store port from sending the LUN reset. More information can be found at this web page. Um, on mini port driver development. So if you have any, if you want more specific information on store port or how to write a driver, it can be found uh, at this location. And also, you could visit my blog at um, askbob.tech, and I have inf I have uh, some information uh, about the operating system and I/O up on uh, that website. And uh, hope you all uh, go there and, uh, and hope you all enjoy it. Um, I guess this this completes the uh, the presentation. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, thank you for uh, for watching.